Thank you for tuning in to Cop with Comic. I'm Brian Cop, and we're with Comic Lana Siebel. Lana Siebel, how the hell are you? I'm great. Good. Thank you so much for coming on. And I know I follow you online. You're Lana underscore Siebel at Twitter and you're Lana Siebel at Instagram, but also LanaSiebel.com. Thank you. What a, what a nice promotion. I appreciate it. I'm oh, yeah. And you're just on all the big time shows. You even snagged some of these coveted park shows, haven't you? I, uh, yeah, I uh, actually am starting my own, like, uh, I, I did my first mic, um, and I think I'm going to turn it into a mic show. It was very successful. It capped right away. And, um, uh, I'm going to be performing a tiny cupboard. Uh, I think now like, I'm booked on four or five shows there. So I'm excited about that. Yes. Um, that is the venue to get. If you don't have a, a picture at the tiny cupboard, you ain't shit. You know, what's funny, Brian. I, right before the pandemic, I would, uh, perform all the time in their indoor space and i also started booking it uh yeah, wait, right were, before. You, were you there with james mack james mack said he, he was doing a lot of stuff with tiny cupboard before yes exactly he introduced me to it and then um i was, I was so happy that uh you know the the owner uh matt and amy they they really liked me so they they kept asking me to come back regularly and also start booking the shows and then they showed me about i think it was in december they showed me the rooftop and i'm like okay, you guys are already like having a big name for yourself in this room, but yeah. outdoors, it's going to be, and this was before the pandemic. I was like, outdoors, this is going to be, I told him, like, I'm the first one to tell you this is going to be <laughs> like a blow up. <laughs> and yes, uh, Lana, Lana Siebel is the one who predicted that tiny cupboard would be. Yeah, the, I was the, the first. <laughs> I, want, <laughs> I want everybody to know. <laughs> yeah. So, well, like, so what's it like doing comedy up there? Um, so you know, it's so funny because, it, you know, it's, an, it's so I actually one of the few people that grew up in Brooklyn. And, um, and so I've been in Brooklyn since I was seven years old. And uh, like I knew Bushwick and that area is going to like blow up. Um, so I kept coming back and all the comedians, they would come in and let make fun of the room, you know, because it's like it's, it is a it is a tiny cupboard. It's like a, it's a very small venue. Uh, they, they pride in being the tiniest. And, you know, people would like, you know, not that anybody would put it down but um i was like this is this is gonna be the shit oh my god and then I, I have to get on this so um i always felt like it was such a privilege to perform there so when um, it was indoors it was tiny but that was good for laughs but now that it's on the fucking rooftop it's like you you're competing with the sights you know the skyline of the city but also many men you know any trains in the distance and things like that is it different playing the roof than it was the indoor part you know, so I, because of uh, all this uh, COVID, I just started um, the, doing all the outdoors last week and I was preparing. I, I was so happy, uh, happily surprised and excited. I got into the Connecticut Comedy Festival. Yes. Uh, yeah, which is outdoors. And also, I mean, like Bill Burr's performing yes, there. Yes, that's and, crazy shit. All yeah, the big times. Is Burbiglia there? Let me see. Yeah, Burbiglia's there. Uh, yeah. Um, See, I think Norman and it's so funny that Sam Sam Morrill or whatever and Mark Norman they're on every show in New York City but here yes. they are the fifth and sixth names you know first comes yeah, Rebe know. Rebeglia and Bobby Kelly and and M Michael Ian Black and and I, I guess I'll I'll see there I bet you you're probably seventh <laughs> yeah <laughs> you seventh know I, I was very happy to be on that flyer and yes. uh um, yeah, my husband even was like, send me that flyer. Now, you know, this is pretty cool. Uh, and they're, they're both, you know, my husband's son, they're like, um, my, they're both my hecklers and they're my greatest supporters. So and like, they're awesome. honest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. You want, you want supportive, but you want honesty too. You're like, I want to yes. sit by you. Oh my then God. When we've polished it, I also want you to laugh and applaud during the show. Exactly. Yes. And he, it's so funny cause he's also got such a uh, talent for this. So um, I've really learned over the years to like trust him. So, you know, okay. yeah, it's, and he's so happy too. like, honestly, 90% of the time he's right. And he's like, I told you this bit or when it works, he's like, I told you. <laughs> Dude, I, I love so, it. Yeah. Everybody's at this fucking thing. I see, uh, see Adam Mueller's there, Claire Alexander, yeah. John Marco Cerezi, Shafi Hossein, just talking so many That's great. That's right. Comics yeah. There. Adam Mueller and uh, G uh, Gianmarco and Gus and uh, I mean if you, I'm, I'm leaving out a ton but they were on the the show that I was on uh, so yeah it was I was glad I, I prepared for it and um, 
I, you know, because I, I had a feeling that it's going to be a boom for comedy once this thing starts to end. And especially if there's a second, a second wave. Um, so I would do zoom like every single day when it was, you know, full quarantine. Mm. Um, which I know a lot of comics are like, it's, it's the worst, but honestly it is, it is better than nothing. You, you sharpen your skills and, um, you know, motivates you to write. And then, yeah, last week I just started doing the, the park ones and I gotta say it is pretty amazing. It, it, you're competing with so much, like you said, like I, during my mic, there's literally a, a dog, I'd say about two feet away. And now people I think can imagine what two feet looks like. <sighs> and uh, one of my friends, she was doing her set and the dog slowly crouched down and took a very graphic and slow poop oh right God. in the middle of her set. Yeah, it was two feet honestly, away. two feet away. It oh was, Lord. It was one of the greatest moments, I think, in comedy. <laughs> yes, that'll be a story yes. forever. It's like, Absolutely. who heckles you? You're like, dude, I've had a dog shit two feet from me doing that. Exactly. It's not going to throw exactly. me off. Exactly. Oh, I love that. But then, I mean, yeah. you, you've also been doing, I mean, you're also, you did a, I think you wrote, you co-wrote and you starred in a short film, and that's been in a bunch of film festivals, kind of, you know, when did you do that? Did you do that, did that before the pandemic or during? Yeah, that was honestly, it, it it was a couple of years, it was like two years ago, but it was about a character who's contemplating suicide and she's all oh alone, which is, I mean, that's so uh, perfect for the times right now. But, yeah. you know, there's, I don't want to spoil the ending, but it's, it's, um, hopefully it, it is somewhat cathartic and uplifting. Yeah, in, in well, well so, I, yeah. I can only say, I hope there's a sequel. I hope the person's Yeah, I appreciate it. It'll be in a sequel that's written by uh, Lana Siebel during the. Quarantine. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> but also, before you're a big time dancer, like you, know, you just were on your rank seventh in the. Let me check this out. First of all, you got a lot of people that you know are on Dancing with the Stars, and as a, I dan do. As a dancer, what's that like? You're a big time dancer. You know what's funny? I I know those. Uh, so the Eastern Europeans, we all I knew I know I knew them pretty well. I knew their families. Uh, we all grew up in the same circle. Um, I'd actually even you know rank higher. Like we would we'd be like on the same level type. So wow, yeah, rank, uh, seven, yeah. rank seventh in the U.S. Yeah, yeah. So I would um, compete all over the United States. So you would have to do nationals every year, and um, I'd also compete in England. Tw um, I go there a couple times a year to compete because they had. Um, like for some reason, London and England is uh, really big on Latin dancing. So it's like they have the biggest um, competitions where like hundreds and hundreds of people follow from all over uh, the world come and compete uh, and yeah, that's train. So fine. That's so funny. You're like, I'm a Latin dancer. Well, you'd be spending a lot of time in London. And you're like, what? it's hilarious. I, this is what <laughs> I talk about in my comedy now that, um, you know, my, 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 um, I guess joke that gets uh, a really great reaction is I tell them I was a Latin dancer. Uh, you know, I was ranked seventh and uh, I had the worst Latin dancer stage name ever. Uh, it was Svetlana Feldman. <laughs> that <laughs> why, 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 like, why do you have to have a stage name at all? Uh, you know, they announce you like in the day and I, I'm going to continue writing about that. But like all of the, my, you know, Eastern, Eastern European people that I grew up with and competed with, um, they, they all had, like, you have to, his name is actually one of the people I, uh, Maxim Chmurkovsky. So that's also another funny, you know, now, I would be like now dancing the sexy cha-cha-cha Svetlana. And he would always take a pause be like, Feldman? I can't. <laughs> that can't. Well, why can't you go Lana Siebel? Oh, well, uh, Siebel is actually my married name. Um, uh, yeah. So you are Svetlana. You're, Lana is short for Svetlana? Yes, exactly. Oh, okay, so you are Svetlana it's, Feldman. I am Svetlana, yeah. Yes. And Feldman was, so it's kind of, a, I mean, um, it just works as a joke because it's a funny sounding name, which yeah. is oh, my yeah. actual real name, yeah. And it was my Latin dancer name, which, um, you know, now comedians are like, you should have kept Feldman, Lana Feldman. So. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love that. And so how'd you kind of, you know, transition from, you know, dancing? And I guess there's probably some similarity between, you know, being comfortable on stage as a Latin dancer, but also as a comic. Like at what point did you figure out that, dude, I dance yeah. pretty, pretty good, but guess what? People are laughing their ass off during our dance practice. Uh, I, I appreciate, I know it. I like to say what's funnier than my comedy was my dancing. <laughs> but I think, I think that's Henny Youngman. I don't know. I can't <laughs> take credit for that. Yeah. I think that's his joke. <laughs> um, you know, it was, it was not an easy transition because, you know, it was, uh, like I based my whole life around dancing. It was, um, you know, my, it was my whole life. Um, I was contemplating on whether to go to college, which I'm really glad I, I went. Um, and, um, 
yeah, it was, it was really not an easy transition. And, you know, people now ask me about like dancing with the stars, like what I think of it. And, uh, you know, my response is always that they're, you know, most of them are horrible, terrible people, the dancers. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and my mission in life now is to take the show off the air, you know, and but, but if the, I can, the people you know on there are great, of course. Uh, no, they're pretty horrible. They're pretty <laughs> terrible people. That's why I didn't want to become one of them. That's, it looks so glamorous, but it's so, cut. I mean, there it's is. Cut, it's cutthroat. Is that what you're saying? Very cutthroat. Oh, okay. And, um, you know, I, again, I started to, to finally write about that, um, because, uh, yeah, they were, you know, very, very, uh, um, uh, cutthroat and also very not smart, but also very arrogant about it. Uh, so it was like the worst combinations put together. And can um, you can you stay arrogant in comedy, or, or will that will that make you just uh, first of all nobody will want to work with you, but also the audience will be able to see through it. Exactly, you have to be likable. You can't have yeah. people yeah listen to you make fun of things and be a total asshole. I think I don't. Yeah. I mean, I guess some get away with it, but I feel like it's more of their persona that right. they're putting on. Um, but, um, but yeah, no, uh, so yeah, it was a hard transition and I started to actually transition and go to college as the whole auditions were starting. I remember like Cheryl talking about it, Cheryl Burke. Um, and, uh, and I was starting to kind of like, you know, slowly walk away from it. Um, and I decided I really wanted to do acting. So I went to Lee Strasberg. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, and I studied, uh, some really great coaches. I studied, um, in HB with, um, Austin Pendleton, who's like a big coach in uh, in New York, he uh, he played the prosecutor. My cousin Vinny, he was the stuttering prosecutor. Ah. I don't know if you're, yeah, he was on the Muppets. He's he's pretty much in. So he taught you how to be a, st a stuttering prosecutor. He taught me how to be a stuttering prosecutor, and uh. Uh, I gotta say, I'm just waiting for my chance. I just, I just need that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work those characters in and so like uh, you know what from your dancing background and the whole East Strasburg uh you know training can you bring into stand-up uh yeah I think it's you know it's funny because I so then I decided I know I've been it was a long road to stand up and that's actually what you know I felt all along was my I I, I don't know I don't want to sound douchey or pretentious <sighs> but like kind of a calling <laughs> I yeah. always felt like uh, you know the um you know that miserableness and sadness. And I would always try to turn that into, you know, um, making people laugh ever since I was, you know, a little, um, but uh, I, I took improv, which um, is not for me for sure. Uh, I felt like, <laughs> I felt like I was uh, Michael Scott from the office. Um, I just come in and <laughs> ruin scenes. And <laughs> yeah, that's um, Michael, Michael yeah. Scott and bringing out the gun in every scene because it want, he wants it to be about him. Exactly, I would bring out my mother. So that would be my gun. <laughs> so, um, which, you know, was kind of funny the first few times because the, the acting, you know, got me through it. Uh, yeah. And I did that in yeah, my first show. And my husband's like, stick to acting, please. Uh, uh, <laughs> and are you doing kind of an impression of your mom on, on stage or some act outs or something? She really is. I mean, she's so unaware. It's just like um, comedy gold. She yes. is. And oh, my God, my son does an impression of her. She's. I mean, if you ever, uh, you know, it's, she's like the ultimate uh, guilt trip. It's, oh. she's just, oh, she's amazing. Um, she was, you know, she was a dentist. My grandmother was a dentist. And, um, you know, I do a whole speech about how she said, you know, she did not come to America for her daughter to do bad Russian accent. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can so, see a big guilt, big, big guilt trip in the form of I sent you to college. Um, I sent you yes. to Rossburg and here you're telling jokes oh, on a rooftop. Exactly. It's, oh, yeah. Now, you know, I, they, I don't even, the only thing she knows is, I think a few years ago, she said something like, I know you go to Greenwich Village Comedy Club and you say something very bad about me. Very bad. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't think she's, uh, and also she threatened me that she's going to start comedy. So I don't tell her about it. That I is can't. so, I want to hear <laughs> your mother threaten to do comedy. Oh, yeah. She told me exactly, you know, and actually it was pretty torturous because she was, um, this was, also, when I just was starting out, she would be doing my teeth, so I couldn't answer her back, oh. which is, so yeah, so that's, she, that's, she said that's why she became a dentist, because she can talk, and nobody could answer her back. <laughs> that's what I was so she ever um, said that, she's like, you know, if you keep doing this, I'm going to go down there and do stand up myself. Yeah, well, she said more along the lines of, yeah, uh, by the way, I just thought of this, like, I think stand up is very similar. You, you, you know, you, you talk, and 
no one else can. Um, yeah. So I guess it's very similar to dentistry. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's but like, um, no, yeah. mom, mom, you are the joke. You are not the joke teller. You are the joke, unfortunately. Exactly. I know. Yeah. That's how yeah. you provide. That's how you've provided for your dear Svetlana. It's not the school, and that's not the schools you sent me to. It's the big guilt trips you put me through every so. Long. Oh my gosh, they are so precious. They really, I don't know. I'm very lucky. I, it's just so much material. I honestly, it's overwhelming. My husband's like, you know, move on from your mother. There's just, it's too much there. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. I just wonder yeah. if you can put like, you know, because I think the same thing happens with somebody like Rachel Feinstein or whatever. Yeah. Like she has such a great mom character that you're like dude i really want like sometimes i fire it up again just to fucking hear that character but you really need to uh yes yeah, spread out into other things is there any content that you could take from her mouth and put it through like i don't know a different accent um, just to kind of make yeah. sure that you know you're using all the material but people don't get sick of the mom voice yeah you know i actually um i have little bits here and there so people do appreciate it but i have so much so much more material now you know my son he's really um i don't know he's just he's like a 70 year old man he's like a 70 year old <laughs> he he's really like a little bit of a he's a don rickles it's a me his comebacks are so so i he's i gotta quick. use him he's so quick because you know wow. he's so yeah because i'm I'm a uh, Jewish and my husband, you know, and I'm, I also came from Ukraine when I was seven and my husband, he's uh, Italian. So it's amazing. The combination is you have somebody who's a hypochondriac, who's also a ball buster. Oh. And that is so right for comedy. It's really, yes. yes. So, right, yeah. So, so I guess, I mean, as somebody went to law school, I kind of regret having done so because I could have done the same career as a paralegal without all the crushing debt. So as somebody yeah. <laughs> who went to not only college, but also Lee Strasberg Theater and then went into comedy, yeah. you know, you, you know, the debt service on this is pretty just crazy for me at least. Is there anything you're going to do with respect to your son to ensure he starts his comedy career on the right foot? Well, I'm already telling him, you know, you remind, remember I'm your mother and I'm opening for you when you, cause he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's already, he's already, uh, like writing a film. He's uh, he's, he said he's going to be a, a director, a DJ and a comedian. Lately he's been, <laughs> <laughs> and he said the reason he's going to be those things is cause you don't have to wear a collared shirt. <laughs> um, so he's got to figure it out. I mean, I, um, I don't I know what I can do to, yeah. <laughs> but, but I mean, really, he can, you know, so, yeah, I suppose it's just a collar thing, but he's, you know, he's, of course, going to have to put music in all, into all of his short films and things that he can, you know, direct and write and star in and things like that. But would you encourage him still to go to college just in case the comedy thing doesn't work out? Or oh, absolutely, are you, absolutely. Okay, all right. I, you know, yeah, no, he, I, I, I think um, he's also you know, which I'm, I'm very proud of, good at math. I think that's the Jewish side. No, my husband's actually good at math as well. <laughs> um, he's, already, he's already asking me, which I find amazing. He's like, so how much are you making doing this? How much are you making? Doing? He's really seeing it, which I wish I would have good. done years ago as a career, as a, how are you going to make money off of this? Which, uh, yeah, I, um, and, and I, you know, I want him to have options and, and uh, think, yeah, think outside the box and not only entertainment, but also be, you know, very bright. Um, so, we'll yeah, yeah, I, yeah, Gabe Nathan said something like that. I think he, I think he's Jewish, or at least uh, we talked a lot about Jewishness. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Gabe <laughs> Nathan said something like, because um, I talked to my dad's tech friend and she was so, she, she became clear, it became a clear immediately that I was so not into tech. And she was like, what are you into? And he said, comedy. And she's like, well, here's what you do. Just get a day job that gives you time and money and do comedy at night. And is that good advice? That's great advice. It, and honestly, um, first of all, I wish I would have, you know, started with comedy like my son much younger and just uh, kept on going. And uh, because in comedy, it's, it's kind of, a, it's an interesting mix. It's both a mix of, uh, it's one of the hardest things because you're so vulnerable and it's so, you know, you're, you're put into lately into parks and divey bars and yeah. you don't know the outcome. tiny cupboards yeah tiny cupboards exactly uh, but it's also one of the most generous uh in terms of the community so you really i mean you know i've been doing it for six years consistently and i'm 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 already seeing just how much you know you really can hone in the craft you really once you really put in the work and write and perform all the time, there's really so much opportunity. Yeah. Um, 
And so, start, so although he should go to college and keep his debt low, I suppose, and get a day job, sure. maybe starting it and pursuing it now and making connections and finding opportunities should, should happen ASAP. Absolutely. And I hope he starts with the day jobs also earlier because, you know, uh, I've, I've had some pretty horrific ones and um, yeah. that kind of shows that motivates you so much um, to, to get out of there. Yeah. Um, well, you, yeah. you know, whenever he's old enough, you know, you know, tell him to come on, come on cop with comic because I want to break him here. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> he's already, he's already got a material. He's constantly pretending to hold a microphone. He watches yes. Seinfeld every day. Yeah, yes. Oh my God. This guy, I'm like, when you're rich and famous, you're putting me on, I'm your mother. And yeah, yeah. Well, and watching yeah. Seinfeld's important. I mean, I guess he has Lana Siebel to look up to too, but Lana Altman. Uh, I appreciate you know, it. Yeah, watching Seinfeld was, you know, let me know that comedy was something you could do as a profession in New York City. And so watching Absolutely. Seinfeld is also just a great ingredient. So, you know, we're following you here online. You're, you're, you know, we can track all your, you know, tiny coverage shows. And what was the Connecticut Comedy Festival? When's that? That's right. Yep, yep. Um, that, that actually just passed uh, this past Sunday. Oh, it was, it was yeah, already yeah. there. And so did you, yeah, catch, yeah. how was your set and how was everybody else, you know, all the former guests like we named and how was Bill Burr? Did you see his set? He actually, I think he's performing a little, on a bit of a later date, but. Uh, oh, it's like a multi-date yeah, yeah. over a couple weekends or something. Exactly. But okay. I was very happy to be put on the seven o'clock show, which, um, you know, drew a really nice crowd. Yeah. Honestly, it was amazing because also. Um, unlike a park, it was more of a, de it was the Fairfield Comedy Club. So it was a more of a desolated area outdoors. It was under, like, the, under, the, under the tent thing. It's like it under was a under, little tent. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and, and so, you know, it felt so amazing because you can hear, you know, you tell the joke, you get the laugh, you tell the joke, you get, and, wow. and it was so, yeah, the, to hear that audible, like a nice, uh, loud audible laughter was, uh, it was like, amazing because um yeah again it's there's a lot of different elements nowadays um so this yeah was, yeah uh, it can be tough to draw a real audience but you know lana siebel's been doing it for so long and it's so funny i appreciate that it can, yeah she can get on all these big shows and make a real crowd laugh which not every comedian can do some of them are stuck you know at little open mics and they got you know people looking at their phones but but lana siebel's the the one who's opening for bill burr so lana siebel oh, yeah. We, oh yeah we track here instagram you're lana siebel and uh twitter you are lana underscore siebel and on uh, the ww interwebs you are lanasiebel.com so lana siebel thank you so much oh thank you so much brian this a half hour's over that felt like 10 minutes oh my god <laughs> well, time, like time flies when you're talking to lana siebel oh, so thank oh, you thank you brian that was amazingly fun wow <laughs>